course. Uh, if you are here tonight and next week and uh, don't come back after that, thank you for coming at least. If you want to go all the way through, this will take us all the way into November. Um, and there's that's just scratching the surface of what we believe, teach, and confess uh, as uh, Christians in the Lutheran tradition. And so for uh, some of you as members of the congregation, this is a uh, there's some review, some refreshing, some learning, some new things. Uh, for some of you who uh, might be interested in joining our church, uh, this is what we do. This is what we believe. This is what we teach. This is what we practice. Uh, and we don't want to just uh, get you on the membership uh, roster as soon as possible so that we can bump up our numbers. We want you to know what you're getting into. We want to take some time with that. Um, and even if you're just wondering some things. You're not sure at all. You have no thought at all of joining a congregation, but uh, someone dragged you along. Someone convinced you to show up. I'm glad you're here. Um, this is good. Uh, this is the most important stuff that we're going to be talking about, in my opinion. Now, if you can open up to page number one, oh, we're going to start with this guy sitting here, uh, not looking uh, like life is too great. Like most of us uh, in the world right now, uh, things are falling apart, right? What are some things that cause people to kind of sit around like this, slumping, slouching, everything's uh, wrong? What are problems in the world right now? Whether yours, anyone else's? Depression, poverty. Depression, poverty. Suicide rates are skyrocketing. Be a long list, but I can't think of this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like everything's wrong. <laughs> Taxation and inflation, um, which puts in doubt your future. Nope. What's going to happen if that continues the way it's going? What could I do? Turn things around. Um, people are struggling with who they are. Am I a man? Am I a woman? Am I cool enough? Smart enough? Am I a good dad? Um, am I a worthwhile husband? What job should I have? Where am I going? What am I doing? It's my direction in life. Okay. Um, it's a long list. We can go on and on and on. I uh, I think we can we can categorize all of the problems in different ways. Uh, what I want to do for this class is put them all under these three categories. We struggle with our de identity. Like, who am I? We struggle with our purpose. What am I for? What do I even exist for? What should I be doing? And we struggle with our hope. So am I still going to have a job by the end of the year? Maybe I've figured out what my purpose is, and I've, I've found a career, and I've got a job, and I've got a direction, but am I going to still be going that direction? I'm going to be on force with that. Can someone end that? Identity, purpose, and hope are places that we're going to thinking about, talking about, and I think they're all settled well. Welcome someone into our Zoom meeting here. We know who we are, we know what we're for, we know where we're going uh, when we get into the beauty of holiness. Psalm 96 is one of the places in the Psalms where you have this phrase, the beauty of holiness. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Look away from his face all the earth. It is in, this is a place, holiness is locations. 
It is in the beauty of holiness that I know who I am. I know what I'm for. And I'm not afraid of the future. These are things that we want to offer to you here uh, in this, this place we call our Savior Lutheran Church in Harrisonville, Missouri. This is not a country club where the, the, the super religious people uh, get to show up and write about the little bit of sinners out there. This is a place for sinners uh, to receive the the gift of the beauty of holiness that's given to us in Christ. This is a place of rest. It's a place of certainty about who I am, what I'm for, and where we're going. We pause there. Any thoughts, questions? Over there to me. My beautiful wife is going to have to corral our rambunctious boys who are in the back room from time to time. So if she gets up and leaves, she's taking yeah. Yeah. thoughts. This is this is where we're going. This is what we're going to be talking about. Any thoughts? Any initial questions? Where we continue on? Why does the psalmist say, "Look away from his face"? Just. I mean, I understand you, you can't see God and live because we're sinners and he's holy. Mm -hmm. But that's almost, you know, don't look, we want to look towards him for our identity, our purpose, and our hope. Not look away from him. So I'm not, yeah. My, what am I missing? These two things, holiness and the looking away, are, are things that. I think a lot of American Christians get wrong and that we as confessional Lutherans have something to offer. With the looking away, God is a, high, a, God, is a God who hides himself. And he wants it to be found where he's hiding. And that's in the face the one from whom men hide their faces. So this is a very uh, literal translation of Psalm 96. Usually you don't have this because the English translations are usually Protestant translations and they try to nicen things up a little bit, clean it up. The look away from his face calls to mind Isaiah. This is the hanging one on the cross. hanging on the cross. Look at this ugliness. This doesn't look like God is present. But this is where God hides himself so that he can be revealed and seen by us. If I'm, uh, one of the things that I'm tempted to do is to try to seek God on my terms. But he's saying, no. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, look away from trying to find him on your terms, but see him where he wants to be found, and that is hidden in the cross, so that all of the awful in our life, um, we know that he's done something about it because he has suffered it on the cross. And so that's that's the beauty of holiness, is Jesus dying on the cross uh, as our seed. If I can find out who I am by looking there where God is hidden. Um, or I don't, it doesn't look like I see God there. I see evil. I see sin. I see blood and death. I see darkness. Uh, I don't see life and love and light. I see the opposite all, all of that. But that's the only place where I get to know him because that's the only place where he wants to be known by me. He's the one who is hidden there in suffering for us. So I, I, there, there's an easier translation that wouldn't have brought up that question. Um, but it also wouldn't have brought out what God once said here, which causes us to say, what's going on here? Glad he asked. So we'll be unpacking that week after week.
um, at, at a lot uh, later on, probably in a couple of months when we're really going to wrestle with some of that hidden gods. Can I deviate? Yes. Well, this just kind of leads me into the whole Mark thing in a new uh, beginner's version of the Bible. There's three different endings. They say that in the first text, it ends here. Yeah. Then it goes a little bit. And then there's like another third of a page. So there's three different endings. But you're not supposed to add or take away yeah. at the end of Revelation. So I, you know, and then when you research things, Google them online, they're all like, They've thrown so many um, chapters out, like Enoch and this, that, and the other, because they can't verify, you know. Yeah. I, I'm back to translations. Yeah, that that will be coming up in tonight's lesson. Um, so w when we get there, we'll come back to to that and some of the discrepancies in. Yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four writers who wrote about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And then the end of Mark is one of those big ones that we'll have to take a look at. Um, so if you can hold on. Okay. So when we are struggling, like the, the guy on the first page, um, things are not good. Everything's falling apart. Um, taxation, uh, money is all a, a mess. Uh, people are committing suicide. Things are all kinds of awful. Uh, you look at the path that you have uh, ahead of you in life and uh, one option is to say, well, I should just try to be as happy as I can be. I'll pursue happiness. Um, choose happy. Choose happy. Yeah. Uh, find publish there. Um, maybe maybe not find theology, but... <laughs> well, my wife's got a shirt. So, so. Yeah. yeah, well, it doesn't God want us to be happy? Shouldn't we want to be happy? It's a good thing to pursue, right? But this, again... Corinthians 3.15 is quoted at me. Or you're supposed to, it's up to us to allow God's peace to control our lives. We're supposed to. Another one of those Corinthians. Yeah, which which is a, a passage taken out of context to, to make it depend on me. Again. Oh. Um, so if I'm going to try to be happy, how do I try to do that? Well, one option is usually money, right? Money can't buy happiness, but can buy a whole lot of things that can put a smile on my face. Um, so here we go. Uh, so that's one option that I can go. Uh, and there's someone who was really wealthy, uh, who at the end of his life talked about all of the things that, that he had uh, and came to some conclusions. Uh, and this is from Ecclesiastes. That's uh, it's a really long, so it's abbreviated. Ecclesiastes, this is in the Old Testament. This is Solomon, uh, who was a king. Uh, and he was a king at peacetime. Uh, people were coming to him all over the place, from all over the world. Uh, he was he had everything, and money was one of them. Uh, and he came to this conclusion, anyone who loves money is never satisfied with money, and anyone who loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This, too, is vanishing vapor. Yeah. It's like a uh, your breath on a cold morning. It's there. You can see it, and then it's gone. Uh, what you can't do is grab it, hold on to it, save it for later. It's there, and it's gone. Um, so many wise people have come to this conclusion about money. It's a great thing to have. Use it. Work hard. When you have it, enjoy it. But it can be, it can be gone like that. Another uh, philosopher from the turn of the century, he said it a different way. He said, um, he said, more money, more problems. Um, <laughs> and similar, I like Solomon a little better, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, bro, that's great. <laughs> practicing that one all day. <laughs> that's what you've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, sure? Money is a fine thing to have when you have it. But is it really going to make you happy? Well, what about being good? You know, following the Ten Commandments, doing the best that you can. Um, I'm going to be as perfect as possible. I'm going to follow the law. I'm going to be upright and just. Uh, what does Solomon say? There's surely not a righteous man on earth who does good, and does not sin. Um, I try to be as good as possible. It's good. Money's a fine thing to have. Being good is a good thing. 
But are you good enough? Probably not. Not according to God's law. What about making some accomplishments, becoming, getting to a point where I get a nice, nice little name tag from, I'm becoming Mr. Manager. I've been promoted. I've accomplished some things. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Manager. You did it. Talk about more problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what does Solomon say? Solomon did some stuff, some amazing things. At the end of his life, he says, well, but when I turned my attention to everything that my hands had done and to how hard I had worked for it, note this, it was all vapor. Um, who's even going to remember? It doesn't take long. You get your retirement plaque uh, a couple of days later. What was that guy's name again? Well, some of you might make it into the history books. I bet, I bet not all of us are going to get, you know, even a paragraph. Your fifth graders are going to study who you were and what you did a hundred years from now. You'll probably be forgotten. And all the things that you worked for, it doesn't take much for someone else to come in afterwards and destroy it all. It's, it's all like vapor. Breath on a cool morning. It's there. You can enjoy it while you have it. Probably going to be taken away. Um, what about, you know, being noticed, everyone praising you? Well, I've, I've seen wicked people buried. They came and gave uh, from the, uh, they, have, they had come and gone from the holy place, and they were praised in the city. They had done this. This too is vapor. Uh, so what if you're praised? Evil people are praised. So you get noticed? What good is that? How long is it going to last? Are you even being noticed because you've done something good? Or did you just trick a bunch of people into thinking that you're worthwhile? Um, everyone who's famous is not necessarily famous for a good reason. So money and being good and accomplishments and fame and um, whichever way you go, you're going to end up here. The wise, the fool, the rich, the poor. It's all... Uh, the Hebrew word for vapor is hevel. Um, I'm not saying you should get a hat too, but this is a cool word. <laughs> hevel in Hebrew, hevel. <laughs> Everything. Your life. Um, the sun came up long before your little speck of life on the timeline. The mountains were there. They're going to be uh, around when you're forgotten. Uh, the sea, the sun, the stars, the moon, the stars. Um, they've been around a long time. How long are you around for? If you get to 100, congratulations, it's probably still not like that. You yourself are heaven. Just a breath. Here, gone. So much for being happy. Ecclesiastes is a depressing book. It sounds like such a happy word, too. Enthusiastic. Well, it's trap. Have a <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you take your time and go all the way through Ecclesiastes, he also has a whole lot of wonder. And there's a lot of this sobering stuff. He also has a lot of good advice. Like if you're, you're here and you're going to be there. So when you have good food, enjoy it. When you have work, find what is good in it rather than complaining about it. Uh, what you have, enjoy what you have when you have it, rather than um, thinking about what you don't have and how unfair it is that you only have this much instead of that much. Or enjoy the good things that you have. Um, work hard. But none of that, even the good advice that you find in Ecclesiastes, none of that does anything about this. And the fair question that we should ask is, can I really be happy if this is where I'm going? If that's where I'm going, and something in me tells me that I need to be good because there's probably something after the grave. I'm going to be judged. Everyone, one of the people's favorite Bible passages to take out of context is judge not. You two will be judged. You're going to be judged. 
Uh, who's judging you throughout your life? It's, let's say this is your lifespan. This is your timeline. Um, at first, you got maybe mom and dad. They spend the time where they're, like, their judgment is really important to you. And maybe at some point that stops for bad because mom and dad were awful. Maybe it stops because you're awful and you done with them. I don't care anymore. Maybe it continues the rest of your life that you really care what they think, but mom and dad are going to feel like judge over you, even if they're not judgmental people. You care what they think. How great it is, is it to get an attaboy from your dad? Um, there's a stretch where what your friends think, really important. Like you, you live under their law which is thou shalt be cool. It's a long stretch that hopefully comes to an end at some point where you're not living under this law and you're not a 35 year old man still trying to be as cool as possible in case, just in case your high school friends show up. Uh, they're probably not going to, but like you're still stuck under their judgment, their law. Uh, <laughs> Society can be judged for a while. You really care uh, what people think. Spend time watching entertainment tonight. Um, you really care as if at some point they might show up uh, and uh, you make a judgment about you or HGTV. Um, and maybe those cameras are going to come into your house uh, and take a tour and say, ah, what an amazing person. Look how wonderful they decorated in here. And we really care about a lot of people's judgment, um, but in the end, who's this going to matter? We're on trial constantly. We see that from ourselves. We got a conscience. So everyone shows us. They demonstrate the work of the law that is written in their hearts. And since their conscience also bears witness as their thoughts go back and forth, at times accusing or at times even defending them, everyone's got a conscience. And everyone has the law of God written in their hearts. So what the conscience does is it reads God's law that he's written on everyone's heart. And it says, it's not good for you to do that. Or, well done, good job. You know, this is that voice. Uh, that you know, cartoons uh, show up with the angel and the uh, demon on the shoulder. <laughs> um, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, there's no society where uh, there's no idea about what the conscience is. Say some different ways of talking about it. Um, but everyone knows I'm not supposed to murder. We haven't come across a, a society where it's like, well, if you're going to be good, you got to kill people. They're like, no reason. They might justify some types of killing. Um, but they really work hard to justify. There are some things that are just, it doesn't matter if you, you grew up Christian, atheist, um, on the other side of the world from the thousand years ago. Um, if you cut in line, I mean, every society knows, well, that's not fair. You're not supposed to do that. We've got, we've got some idea of right and wrong uh, written in us, and the conscience screams about it. We know that we're going to be judged. And we fight against ourselves. You know, uh, James writes, uh, where do conflicts and quarrels uh, among you come from? Don't they come from your cravings for pleasure, which are at war in parts of your body? We know about an internal struggle. It's things that I want, but I know that I shouldn't want them, or at least at this time or in this way. Um, this is common among mankind. You know, that We've got conflicts that come from doing what we shouldn't do. We know. We know by conscience that there is right and wrong. And if there's right and wrong, then there's law. And if there's law, then there's a lawgiver. 
and is mom and dad the lawgiver? Is it just society? Is it just friends? Can the law constantly be changing with the times? Or is there law that stays the same? And if there's law that stays the same, regardless of time or place, is there a lawgiver that's bigger than mom and dad? So is that against your consciousness? Say again? Is that against your consciousness? Oh, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, if 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 I'm my cravings for pleasure, I'm going against my conscience. Like I here he's talking about things that I know I shouldn't do this. And I'm gonna try to get away with it anyway. So I'm fighting against myself. Uh, and then the other person, uh, where this quarrel that was involved in this quarrel, they also know that hey, you shouldn't do that. But if I've got a conscience. Uh, and it's written, it's reading the law in my heart, and all of mankind has a, some uh, agreement on some basic things about right and wrong, no matter when, no matter where, then that hints at a lawgiver that's bigger, that's beyond this. That this is not just something that society, the patriarchy is enforcing on us. Something like that. It's bigger. And if it's bigger, um, is he going to act as judge? Scriptures say that he is. The Lord will bring judgment on all flesh by fire and by his sword, and those slain by the Lord will be many. Isaiah 66. That's not a comfortable one. And also in the New Testament, lest we think that this was just the old, angry Old Testament God, and then maybe there's a new, nice uh, New Testament God, and he just wants you to be happy. You do you is his only law. Um, no, he's the same God. Solemnly charge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who is going to judge the living and the dead. We should be good. We want to be happy good to be happy. It's better to be good. Um, and it's necessary to be good. We stop there for a moment. Um, everyone in the world agrees that it's good to be happy. Do you agree that it's better to be good than to be happy? To I'd like to be happy because I am. How about that? <laughs> okay, so you want you want the two to grow together. Yeah. Um, the, that the happiness grows out of my goodness. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be happy We're doing as that. an evil person and for being evil. Well, that's you psychopaths. You don't want to be that. Um, I had a Zoom thing that showed up and said that the meeting is going to end and end the best. Um, I'm going to employ my wife to be ready to uh, restart the Zoom meeting. Everyone who's on Zoom right now, it might get cut, cut out in five minutes or so. Um, we'll try to get it back on and see what's going on. It shouldn't do that, but um, my wife is here to turn to the rescue. Thank you. <laughs> so do we agree, though, did? It's better to be good than to be happy. You want to be both. But there's times when you recognize you need to sacrifice your happiness for what's good. Um, it, 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 I'm really happy when you just get to sleep through the night. But when you got a baby, there's good things you need to do and sacrifice your happiness in the middle of the night. And if you're going to say, eh, <laughs> you know, Change your own diaper, uh, five-year-old. Um, I, my happiness is important, and my sleep, and my happiness, they go together. Um, that that's not good. There's times like that uh, when it's better to give up on your happiness for what is good. Uh, God be praised for soldiers uh, who have fought, who have suffered, who have died, who have been willing to go. 
because it was good. It was not something that uh, they're skipping off to war and happy. Uh, they might be marching and singing, and there's a certain joy to it, a real joy to it, because this is good. But happy, um, not so much. Better to be good. Now, if it's better to be good than happy, there's also another step, and that's uh, what is true. Um, what is true is more important than making sure that I'm good. Because if I'm certain of my goodness based off of a lie, that's no good. And these last few years, everyone has been certain that they are doing the good thing. And there's been like a million different things and everyone's contradicting each other and constantly changing things. And um, is your goodness based off of truth? So it, truth is foundation and, and goodness needs to grow out of that. And happiness, joy that I have, if it's growing out of truth and goodness, then that happiness is something that's worthwhile. But if happiness is the, the main thing, I'm probably willing to believe a lie or do what's wrong. My feeling, my emotion is important. So similar to, uh, it's better to be good than happy. Um, you want to seek the truth more than goodness because I can't get to goodness without the truth. So different than the, the first connection, it's better to be good than happy. 